Welcome, in this video we're going to take a look at how you can track mobile devices on your network. My name is Dara Delaney from Netforge. I'm now logged on to a Langarnian instance here. Now Langarnian is deep packet inspection software that monitors network and user activity. When I say network, that means any sort of device that connects your network, wired or wireless, it tracks and monitors what, what's happening on your network. Now as a data source, it uses network packets so or network traffic, so you can set up a spam port, mirror port, or virtual environment uh, using vSwitches. And we'll cover that later on in more detail. But for the moment, let's take a look at how you can track um, mobile devices. So on my Langarnian here, I've got a mobile device dashboard. And the first element has shown me an inventory of wired or wireless devices. So because it's Tesla, I don't have too many. I've got two Android devices. You see their MAC address here and their IP. And there's some other information like DHCP and when it was first seen, last seen. But the IP or the MAC then is very useful if you want to track that device on your network. We can also see here in the last 24 hours, um, we've got two Android devices. One, the last one, this is last seen at 11.14 and 10.54. We can see traffic associated with wireless devices, whether it's HTTP, file share traffic, and we'll do some analysis of this later on. We want to focus on a device. But one of the most interesting things you can do when it comes to monitoring or tracking mobile devices is to analyze the DNS traffic or the DNS lookups coming from those devices. So very, very useful when you want to track mobile devices. So let's extend this element here, which is DNS lookups associated with um, mobile device or wireless device on my network. So what we can see here is not only the DNS lookups, but it gives away the type of applications these things are running. Mail.google will be your Gmail, Facebook, WhatsApp, Viber. In this case here, this device, this 166, this device is phoning home to OnePlus, which um, I think earlier on we could see that was a OnePlus device. Uh, other else of note, interest of note, as I said, we looked at WhatsApp already. But let's um, say, okay, well, this thing is phoning home to OnePlus. Uh, I need to track more about this. What else is it doing on my, on my network? So I can take this IP address here, pop it into the search box at the top, and just press return. And we'll just take a closer look at what this thing is doing, what machines is it talking to. So first element here shows us that 92% of traffic to and from this device is encrypted. A small amount we've not classified, but most traffic here, not classified, is just some app we don't recognize. Um, but let's take a look at the HTTPS traffic. In fact, if we go down here, we actually will get a breakdown of all of the connections. And let's extend this um, element here. So here we can see what it's talking to. So Google Video, which would be associated with YouTube, it's mostly watching YouTube. Um, some Gmail and mostly Google interaction there, back and over to Google. But pretty much all of this device, or certainly when it comes to traffic on the network, it's um, YouTube. Uh, other domains is looking up here. And if we go down further here, we can see the web client information. Um, this would be like browser OS information. We can see it's a OnePlus again here. There's our DNS records for this particular device. So I can extend this here and scroll through and see the type of lookups, the type of services this thing is trying to get to. So everything from YouTube. But I said we looked earlier with the connections and it's mostly just YouTube. While it looked up OnePlus, I didn't see any data being sent or received to that domain. And looking at the domain or the DNS lookups, there's quite a few for this. It's mostly at Google um, Maps. I said it's pretty much all Google activity I can see here within the um, the, D the DNS lookups to and from that device. So that's a very quick introduction or basic overview of tracking mobile devices. A good way to do it is by monitoring network traffic because you don't need to put an agent or anything on the device itself. These things, when you put them on, when you, they come on a network, they want to phone home, they want to go to the web. So if you monitor network traffic, you can detect them if you know where to look. And once you detect them, you can pull mesh data from the traffic, like the DNS, the applications, domain names, all of that information, so you can understand what they're doing on your network. So to finish, I just want to talk about how you can, for a system like LangGuardian, how can you find a data source? Where can you capture traffic on the network? So let's take a look at that. 
One of the important things when it comes to tracking mobile devices, if you want to use network, let's say network packets as a data source or network traffic as a data source, is to pick a, a point on the network to capture traffic because you can't go around to every mobile device and try and capture the data. You just don't have a connection, you don't know where they are. So if we look at a typical network, your mobile devices connect to access points, which access points go back to some sort of wired closet, a switch. Those switches then may go through multiple layers or sometimes directly back via fiber to a core. And that core then will go back to a firewall, maybe another switch, but certainly the route to the firewall, the internet, is through that core. So if you set up a traffic analysis application, such as LangGuardian, and use a span or mirror port off the core, that'll give you a fantastic data source because as these devices try and connect to the internet, try and phone home, or whatever they want to do, you get a copy of that traffic as it passes through the core. Or if those mobile devices want to access a local resource, you can again see that traffic passing through the core. So at the core of your network, somewhere where your data converges, certainly somewhere where your firewalls are connected, is a fantastic data source. You can then leave the power of the metadata you know, extraction or metadata analysis to LangGuardian. Don't worry about you know, all these billions of packets. The system will be its smart enough to be able to extract out the, the human readable stuff so that then you can use the reports we looked at earlier on. So that's the basics. I mean, everybody's network's different. It may not look like this here, but if you ever, if you have a query about your own network, you can always contact us here at Netforge, either email support at netforge.com or go to the netforge.com website under the support menu. You'll see an option there to contact support and we're more than happy to help out and take a look at where you can acquire data on your network.